Ok, så da starter vi. Um, since this webinar is going to be in English, I'm going to do this little introduction in English. Um, hello everyone and welcome to this online book launch of uh, Fadlavi's Minigraph. My name is Gilda Axelrud. I work at Kunstnershus and uh, have been one of the co-curators of um, Fadlavi's exhibition, as well as editor of this new publication. Um, before we start, I simply wanted to give you a short introduction, uh, both of the books and of the participants. Um, so the book is part of a series that's called Minigraph, which Consensus launched earlier this year. Um, each book of that series is published in relation to an exhibition. And the aim of the series is to give the artists the chance to explain personal reflections of his or hers artistic production, as well as involving the reader in the process towards an exhibition. Um, so the book has two chapters, so to speak, um, one of which is an interview with the artist by a person of the artist's choice, and the others are installation views of the exhibition. Um, so Fadlavi's publication, which I'm holding here, which is launching today, uh, is about the gigantic floor painting that was presented as part of Künstlerinstitut's 90th anniversary exhibition uh, between June and August this year. The painting was commissioned by Künstler Suess and resulted to being a weaved thread of Fadlabi's personal take on um, 90 years of Künstler Suess's history. So it's a real pleasure for me to be able to launch this book today and I'm very proud to welcome both curator and writer Karl Martin Forby, uh, who Fadlabi speaks to in the book, as well as journalist and writer On Raza Nagvi, who will be leading this discussion. So Karl Martin joins us from Trondheim. Hello, Karl Martin. Um, he works as the program curator at uh, Kunsthal Trondheim, where he recently curated the exhibition Lift Every Voice, which can be seen as at Kunsthal Trondheim until January 23rd. On here, hello On, is a journalist, writer, and communicator. Uh, he's worked at the national, uh, Norwegian National TV, media and advertising um, the past 10 years. And his official debut as writer and editor with the book Third Culture Kids, which you probably have heard about and which was recently awarded the prize of the 2020 Most Beautiful Book. Uh, so very warm welcome to all three of you, Fadlavi, Karl Martin and On. And just on the practical side for anybody joining us, um, if anybody here would like to ask questions over the course of this discussion, please just use the chat option at the bottom of your menu on Zoom and ask directly to the panel members. On will have a round of questions at the very end of this discussion, but you're, um, you're more than welcome to write them down and send them in at any time. Also, please make sure that your microphone is muted, but I think that's more for us panelists who are not speaking. So now I'll leave you to On to, to take over. Thank you very much. Uh, hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're good. I, I, I couldn't hear you, I hope you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to like just, just start off this by saying, uh, first of all, what a what a beautiful book and, and, and a great work. And and first and foremost, we're, we're, we're I'm here as a fan. I'm not even here as a person that knows art more than the average museum goer. Uh, and and it's it's really an honor to be here. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of your work uh, from before this for lobby, uh, and. Um, and I really look forward to like talking about uh, the, the, the piece, the, the conversation you had with the artist Per Krog and everything in between. So, so first of all, I wanna know uh, how it was getting to know each other over this project and working on this. But happy you go first. Yeah, well, I uh, yeah, I know Karl Martin for uh, I know Karl Martin since I was uh, since I was a student at the at the Art Academy, I think, and the first time uh, we collaborated. I, I used to run this like uh, this uh, that my first artist run space called uh, before even one night only. I think. Oh no, it's after one night only. Something like that, and then now uh, Karl Martin was uh, still in in Denmark, and then he invited me to to uh, like to some uh, some some art fair. I don't remember really, but I mean I know the guy for a while. Uh, we always been talking about working together, and at some point, uh, uh, yeah, when uh, when Kusnesus told me about the. Uh, uh, the, the, the mini graph series and 
I thought like he's the perfect person to have a, to have a chat with and uh, yeah, and make this book. Cool. Yeah, I, um, I remember I invited you for a long time ago on a, it was a conversation at Charlottenburg about whiteness actually. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember then because I was also, I invited you because of the Congo village, like everybody else, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I remember back then, this is, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago or something. Uh, you start, you were talking about this uh, research you were doing into, uh, into painting and in, into the history of painting. And you were talking about barbershops already back then. And so it's been super interesting for me to actually have a chance to pick up on that, uh, on that research and that uh, conversation. But also just to answer you on, um, for me, it was, I mean, I know about Fred Labi's art and we've always, always had like lots of great conversations when we met, but it was really a chance for me to, to learn about his research and about his, the ideas behind his art that I really never uh, had a chance to, to, to kind of dig into. Uh, I think for Labi, he's a he's a very humble person, you know, and and uh, he's not a person that necessarily kind of talks a lot about kind of the the, the in depth research of, of of what he does, you know. But uh, it's it's really deep stuff, and it was just like it's it was overwhelming to kind of see how you managed for Labi to translate that research and those ideas into this uh, painting, into this piece, in such a thought-provoking and beautiful way yeah i totally agree and, and and that is the great thing about it as well i think that it feels like two friends having a conversation but but at the same time because you you agree and sometimes you disagree a bit and you you really talk about things that that yeah it really ref reflects what you're saying uh, i can really see that in in the book and um th did the like the conversation shape the work for you for lobby in some way uh, I mean, you know that we were. I, I was lucky like twice. I was lucky because of uh, because uh, I was asked to do this work before Corona times, yeah. and and that it happened during Corona times. So I was uh, like uh, I had something to do actually. Like uh, when everybody was in lockdown, and uh, I, I I could just go there and paint the whole day, and then at night I will call Carl Martin and then we'll have a chat. Uh, so yeah, d d definitely. Like I, I don't know, but I at least I know for a fact that like uh, I, I thought for very long about the title for the piece, and I figured it out in the middle of our conversation. And I think uh, yeah, I think I think talking to Carl Martin helped a lot, like uh, to find the title for that piece. Really cool. Uh, and 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 speaking of it. Um... Do explain the, the title on the onset vertigo. Yeah, so uh, I mean, like in, in in the book itself, like they put the, they 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 have this quote from our conversation, <clears throat> and I, I think that's that's what it, what explains it in a way. It's a uh, uh, you know uh, like this whole piece is a is a is a dialogue is a with with uh, with uh, with Per Krog. Uh, but Per Krog painting, in, in Per Krog painting, he, he have a very, he's very certain about uh, the phases that the artist should go through and, uh, and the role of the artist in a way. So, uh, so uh, like the first thing that like his painting is also like uh, high stuff, you know, it's in the ceiling and he have these like three like obvious phases that like, you know, like, uh, like uh, when you're learning, you know, like, uh, and then he symbolized it by, 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 you know, like the skeleton learning anatomy and like figuring out how to paint in a way, like, uh, like just, just uh, dissecting it, like just learning the craft. And then the second, uh, the second phase is when you practice art and when you get deceived and funny enough, is using women to symbolize like uh, <laughs> being deceived. But then the last one is when you reach the enlightenment. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and the guy is, is a technical genius, right? He's like, he's such an amazing painter. Like the last, the last phase, like, uh, I don't know if this was a part of the architecture or if he asked for this window 
like at the very end of this painting, if you look, there is a window like this at, to the ceiling where you can see the sky, you know? So it's like, it's just amazing, you know? It's like, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to just, like I wanted to just talk about being so confused, not that, not as certain as as, as Per Krog is. Like, I'm not like, I don't have a, like a high, I'm not a priest. I don't have a high place. I don't, I don't really like uh, own enlightenment. I don't think I will ever reach it. And this is not even my goal. So it's just about this, this mess, this chaos of, of making art, just being like, being busy, being, being, uh, being, uh, being in a vertigo, you know, like uh, not knowing, uh, not knowing all the time, basically, and feeling unbalanced all the time. So, yeah. I think it's a, it's, it's a great title and, and it's an even greater, greater story behind it. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> I, I think it's, 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 it's inspiring to, to, to listen to. And, um, your thoughts on it, Carl Martin. Do you have any thoughts on the title? You were like there when kind of it, it, it wouldn't be, it was made. Yeah. So. Yeah. I remember we were talking and, and we were talking about the title and it's just like, yeah, I think I found a title and I think this is what it's going to be. And you were kind of been struggling with it for a while. And it was such, it was such a powerful, um, powerful idea. I think, especially at the time when, when we were having this conversation, you know, because this was going on, you know, from March, I was at home in Trondheim, home office, snowing and it was cold and dark you know and uh, we were having these conversations of the evening and so there's the pandemic and and also the, all the stuff that was happening after uh, the murder of George Floyd uh, and and it was just like it was such a dense and, and, and crazy moment and so when when Fadlabi had told me about this this title you know it was it was it really touched me because this was how so many of us felt you know like this feeling of everything is just yeah. unbalanced and 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 we don't really know where to stand and we we feel like we need to do something we feel like we need to produce but at the same time we don't know how and and it's just kind of and it felt a lot very closely connected to what Fadlabi he was doing you know like making this floor painting you didn't know exactly what it was going to be when it started and and also just kind of figuring out how it what it should kind of end up being and then having this moment where you're standing and looking at the painting and then just kind of seeing how how this onset of vertigo happens you know how you are feeling like the earth is is moving you know or floating somehow and that was just like it was it was really a piece for its time, you know. I, I totally agree. Uh, uh, but but what about your title in the book? You you call it um, being followed around by a big black man. Yeah, yeah, being followed around by a big black dude. I think I should call it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, it it came from the conversation that that we were having, me and Fadlabi, and and he just mentioned this moment we were talking about, you know breaking through or having status and all of these things um, and uh, and the difficulties of also kind of getting to a point where you feel accepted as a person of color. Yeah. Um, and then Fadlapi said, you know, but it's always the same, you know, if you, we would still, if you walk behind a, a person or a girl in a, and, and, and she becomes scared of you, you know? Um, yeah. And, and this sense, I mean, there can be all kinds of good reasons for someone to be worried when they're walking alone through a park, you know, and a, and, and a big man is behind them, you know, um, or just any man maybe. But, it's, but it just really got me thinking because this is also something that I have uh, thought a lot about. Yeah, me uh, too. Both, both the fact that, you know, it's a terrible thing that, that women uh, need to feel that way <laughs> uh, or every, anybody who feels scared when, they, when they're alone out, you know, but also the fact that what it actually does to a person to know that this person is afraid of you, you know? Yeah. Um, and while we were talking, we were talking a lot about kind of, I guess you would call it blackness in the sense that we were talking about, you know, this, this skin color and, and what it actually means. It's kind of this front, it's this thing that you have on, you know, but, mm -hmm. and you can't take it off. 
and it's something that people notice uh, and it's something that you also yourself start to kind of use and work around you know on i mean you're writing a book about third culture kids i mean we, this is part of our our production in our lives and so i also started feeling like you know this black man that that is it's also following us you know <laughs> he's also following <laughs> he's also following me and he's also following for and it's also following all of us you know yeah, uh, yeah. And everywhere we go this guy is just kind of standing behind us and 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 uh, scary and being scary, you know, and 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 why is that, you know? And that is kind of the face, or it's some kind of an it's an image of racism somehow, you know. And that kind of is a is a good segue actually to another thing I, I I've been thinking about while reading this book. I, I like your answer to if you're here because you're black, they're here because they're white. <laughs> I also left when you for lobby left in the in the book over this answer but but it feels like that is like that's some of the first things that we learned in this book is that it's been it's been hard to do this commission work and it's 90 years Kunstmanis Hus and all of this that you're explaining like uh, pol poli politically <laughs> it was hard to say that uh, or or black lives matter and roots and everything is like in this and so, yeah, how was it a difficult process, more difficult than something you've done before? And please do explain. I, I mean, like if you don't find your current assignment more difficult than the one before, then you're then you're a loser, then you're not a good artist. So, so like, like uh, you have to hate the work that you made last year. That's the rule, you know. Like you have to, you have to see what's so horrible about the work that you made last year, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So this is definitely, definitely it was. Uh, you know, the whole idea is very difficult. Like, how can you, how can you like uh, not become an illustrator? How can you make an art piece of your own that that you can stand for when you're asked to? To, when you're commissioned to do like a piece about the history of consensus, like being 90 years of, you know? So like uh, I escaped by having a conversation with Per Krog, you know? And uh, Per Krog is, is, is really important. Like, uh, like, uh, like him, and Chris, him and Christine Krog, you know? Like I went to the Art Academy, it was founded by Christine Krog. And, uh, and I thought like having this dialogue with him, then somehow I will cover all these 90 years because he's the first, he's the first and the last person who was commissioned to have an art piece actually like, uh, like permanently at Kunstnesus. You know, Kunstnesus is supposed to be like a space where you can show art. So it should, should be neutral. It should be like a white cube, you know, where people can bring their art and that there is one art piece that's always there and it's Bert Krog's art piece. And it and, and it's it's been there since like 1930 or 32, you know, yeah. and uh, and uh, I thought like yeah let's let's have a let's have a conversation with this guy but but at the same time I knew that it's uh, like I'm not I'm not megalomaniac I don't think I like um like I, I I don't think I even deserve to have a conversation with this guy I'm not in his I'm not uh, I didn't reach his uh, like. Uh, like his status yet, but I felt like, yeah, it's it's sort of like, I always say it's like if, if you're sitting in the dinner table and you're trying to explain to your grandpa what uh, what uh, uh, like social media is, or, you know, like what, the, you, you know, what TikTok is, you know, like, yeah, what is, what's up with TikTok? And then you go like, you know, it's, uh, you do this and you have to follow the dancer. Like, why do you do it at all? And you have to explain to him and you will not get it. And you know, and you would not have the tools to explain to him, yeah. but it's uh, but it's a, uh, it's a conversation that's worth taking, you know. It is. <laughs> it is. It really is. And and I think that when you talk about being like illustrator and copying things, you also talk about your inspiration and and a story that uh, you say, Carl Martin. It seems like you told before uh, a lot of times, and you say, yeah, at parties, uh, but. Yeah, you talk about like uh, church paintings from from three hundred uh, year three hundred in Ethiopia and, uh, and 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 you go really deep into like uh, art history and, and and inventing something and not inventing copying and and it seems like it's been a real like process for you. 
And I think that a lot of people, no matter what kind of creative you are, you struggle with this in some kind of way. I was, I used to be afraid of reading um, other writers in my time because I was like, oh, I hope I don't copy someone and they say that, oh, it's a new Z Sun Sakar or whatever. So, so it, it is a genuine fear. And you say that you, you learn to like catch up to it and, and find your, your voice and, and what, what is that process for you and how did you do that? So, so they say, uh, they say, if you want to make a margarita pizza, that's like the easiest one ever, you know, it's like just like yeah. sauce. And if you want to make a margarita pizza from scratch, you have to invent the universe because there is nothing that's original, you know, like everything it's, it's knowledge based on knowledge based on everybody's copying everybody, you know, uh, what makes things personal is not, uh, it's not that you're the first one like to, to make them. But the fact that you just make them, you know, like th that it is you, that you take ownership and, uh, and, uh, and, and at the same time, like, you know, like, uh, there's like, like, nobody's like anybody else, you know, like, it's like, you're unique somehow, in a weird way. So whatever you say, uh, you'll say it differently. Uh, you know, painting is, you know, Carl Martin, when he started talking now, he said like, yeah, we never talked about, like for love, he never like, uh, talked about how, like um, explained like his research and stuff. Yeah, that's because painting is boring. Painting is like, uh, painting is, like, nobody paints now, you know? Like when I, when I went to the art academy, it was, uh, uh, it was a disaster. Like, you know, like I, like, people couldn't even like, you know, like, uh, like a painter is just the worst thing ever, you know, <laughs> like painting is, <laughs> painting is so dead, dude. It's like, uh, so it's like, it's a, it's a long struggle, first of all, to prove that like, yeah, I paint, but what I, like what I'm doing, like by, uh, through painting, I'm also making like contemporary art and I'm making conceptual art and I'm making smart, I'm, I'm asking like uh, smart enough questions, you know, to, 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 you know, to be heard, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and this, like, this, this, your question, like, the, the journey, like, trying to find your own voice, uh, I, I say that I, I figure out my, like, now I have my voice when I paint, like, I don't copy the Ethiopian chair painting and the barbershop painting, because, because at the beginning, I wanted to just, like, find this, this imaginary like bridge between barbershop paintings and Ethiopian church paintings. Cause I thought they are linked somehow because uh, like uh, when I studied painting in Sudan, I studied European, European uh, art history, you know? And I was like few kilometers away from the pyramids of, uh, of Kush, you know? Uh, I thought like even the distortions like are, are, are similar to the distortions in Ethiopian church painting. Uh, but those are not really distortions because like African art is not about like uh, the likeness, copying the likeness of an image, but, but, but capturing the essence of an image. It's like jazz, you know, it's like, it's like the jazz of, uh, the jazz of visual arts, you know, uh, there are rules, there is a frame, but like you can just play as much as possible and go up and down and, and you're not like, uh, you're still there, you're still within the frame, you know. Uh, I felt that I I have my own voice like I, I think very recently maybe like three years ago or something when I started to paint like when I started to paint uh, paintings about uh, personal stuff and not and not related to my research in uh, in figuring out like a parallel painting history that is not Eurocentric when I when I could talk about my depression and when I could tell about like my failing love stories or when I can that uh, paint uh, how I disappointed my kids, you know? Then I felt like, bam, yeah, now, 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 now I'm, I'm using like this way of painting, but I'm talking about stuff that's so personal and, 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 and yeah, that's definitely my voice then. So you kind of distance yourself from, from a kind of identity to, to, to just, it, it's just about you and you are unique. I mean, not exactly. You make it sound so horrible. Like, no, no, no. no. It wasn't meant to be sound horrible. No, 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 no. 
No, no, but, no, no, uh, no. but but it's kind of like it kind of makes sense. But like you find yourself when you focus on yourself. Like I don't know. Like at the beginning, it was just the research to figure out like a way to paint. That you know, I was very bothered. I was very annoyed when people could just see that I'm not European when they look at my painting, even if I'm not at the room. You know, and in my second year at the academy, I spent the whole year trying to paint paintings that would not like reveal uh, like my ethnicity that you can look at them and like yeah a white painter could have made those mm -hmm. that was really important to me you know because i was really annoyed that people can just walk in look at the painting and tell that i'm not i'm, I'm not white and this is just it's, it's horrible that means like it's all these tools endless tools and i just always choose to just like reveal myself you know so yeah i i don't know but but Karmatin, you're you're a curator, and I just want to pick up on one thing that Fadlavi said in, in his answer about uh, paintings being boring. D do you agree? Uh, no, I think that's completely crazy. But I mean, Fadlavi he says all kinds of crazy shit. <laughs> I think he. <laughs> but 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 I do but I do um, I do understand where he comes from, and I also think that it's. I mean, I felt the same way, especially when I was studying and. And and I don't and also I also know that Fadlavi, I mean, of course he loves painting, you know, it's not like a but it's um but it's super interesting because painting is this like it's such a loaded medium, you know. It's like it's it's like the most famous artist that we that we kind of uh, look up to today, you know. It was like they were all kind of painters and and it's just, uh, and it's also like the super white medium or European Western uh, medium, you know, like you see after the war you would have like these male abstract expressionists you know coming in and and talking about you know like male identities and stuff like that you know and and also before that uh, also in the interview you know Fadlabi talks about Picasso and Modiani and and how you know painting and cubism was was really used to also like further European colonialism um, and that's something that I thought was super interesting when you talk about how how you know African uh, art has been you know suppressed and and uh, you know it couldn't be contemporary it couldn't be modern you know it had to be primitive that's the only way that Africans can paint basically you know and it's it's just like it really pinpoints to 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 look how difficult it is to actually change these um, these ideas of what qualities, I mean, even today when we are talking about all these identity politics within art and culture and so on, you know, it's always about, yeah, but it always needs to be about quality. It can't be about skin color. It can't be about gender, you know, it's about artistic quality. It's just like, yeah, but the, I, our ideas of artistic quality is based on, you know, people calling Africans primitive, you know, yeah. and, and, and looking at their paintings as being primitive at the same time as, as they were painting and basically stealing stealing these ideas you know and then putting it into a package that uh, that makes it look um, what what they would call modern so that's yeah. like super interesting a good point from uh, from Fadlabi and I really think that especially also with the conversations that are going on at the moment in uh, like in, in in Oslo you know at the art academy about decolonization in there in Copenhagen where I'm from where you know professors are throwing uh, sculptures in the water uh, and I like um, one of the, the professor there, she she had like this really good point where she said like, she doesn't want to erase these people from history. She basically just wants to make space for the ones that he suppressed, you know? Whoa, uh, yeah. And I think that's a super good point also with the, with the type of work that Fadlab is doing. And, and, you know, it's not about copying, you know, it's about lineage and lineage and, and history, you know? So, so when Fadlabi, he's, 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 uh, taking on these histories and taking on these techniques and looking at them, you know. Um, the beautiful thing is, you know, it's not about creating some kind of big masterpiece. It's about kind of being part of a whole and 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 giving respect, paying respect to the ones that should be paid respect to, because we've seen that with African culture and African history um, for so many years that the things have been taken from the people who created it there and then turned into something else by. Uh, by a Western uh, musician or artist or whatever. I can't believe that you guys don't have a podcast. Like, 
like there's so so much here that that I think that we could talk about for hours and go into depth in and and be like okay let's learn more about this and this because for me like just being a fan of art and paintings uh, I don't know these things uh, <laughs> I don't think about it in that way and, and to read stuff like this and get that the point of view I, I think is important because then when you see people throwing those sculptures in the water you understand where they're coming from you might not agree but you can understand where people come from and I think that that's a really important thing here uh, and, and just like segue forward in this conversation because there's so much I, I, I want to ask about but but yeah, it, it seems like an emotional process. And, and, and Fadlabi, you, you kind of like, you, you bring forth a lot of opinions that, that you have, like you, it's a lot of thoughts and, and it's a lot of um, things that, that you want to say. Um, was it a really emotional process um, while, while making this, like everything in it, it feels like you're really ventilating in this book. I mean, the, the conversation was, you know, like it's a, uh, that's another piece in a way, you know, like the book is, uh, is a yeah. separate piece because, uh, you know, I know Karl Martin, I know him for a while and, uh, but like, like Corona helps, you know, like we were just, yeah, it was just me and him and yeah, like there's no way to escape and we had to talk, you know, and we had to ask each other questions, uh, like uh, we had to put each other in corners sometimes, you know, and, and he's really good at it. He really put me to like, yeah, he, he trapped me so many times, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's what's so fun about it, you know? So I don't know, man, like, I mean, <clears throat> like uh, I, if, if, if painting is emotional, I don't know, I, like hopefully not, it's just, it's just work, you know, like, you know, it's just like you go and, and work. But yeah. like, yeah, but you as a person, you have your good days and your bad days and you get emotional. If you don't get emotional, then you're horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like you're dead then. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes you're, you're kind of strict uh, in this book as well. Like, um, but, but, but yeah, I, I, I get you. But, I, and, I, and I was thinking about this, this uh, Japanese curator that said that, because uh, I was thinking of, uh, I don't know why I thought this, but I, I was reading about Fadlabi, the, 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 the Sudanese, African, Norwegian man I know that paints. And I, I've thought of this as African style paintings, but I don't know a lot. But, but this Japanese curator tells you that this is Norwegian. He sees us through, uh, please, uh, and I wonder like when that happened and please explain that better than I did. Um, did you have an identity crisis when you were told this? I mean, like it wasn't, it wasn't exactly like that. I was, uh, I was picked to show in a regional show, like the biggest one in the, in the Middle East. That's the Sharjah, uh, uh, and like uh, by by a Japanese curator when she was sent to Norway to pick Norwegian artists. And funny enough, she picked like two artists. It was me and Jumana Manna, who's a Palestinian, who also studied at the Art Academy, and we were like the two Norwegian artists. So like when I walked in, like the, like uh, yeah, when I showed up in charge as the Norwegian artist, it was uh, it was a funny thing. Like it was, I I know that like uh, I know that it's not so many Sudanese people who showed at the Sharjah uh, 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 Binali, and then and I funny enough, like I had to deal with like uh, problems from my region. I I took with me to. Like I had two friends of mine, two, 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 two colleagues from the Art Academy, but they were girls, they're really amazing painters. But they're like two girls, like blonde, white girls, and they were my assistants in Sharjah. And I'm a black man. Like you should, like you can imagine like uh, how hard it was for them, you know? Like everybody thought they were hookers, you know? Like, because uh, why do you hang with the black dude? You know, they're like, yeah, like, if, if they wait a little bit before I come to pick them with the taxi so we can go and paint in, in front of their hotel, they will be like guys offering, you know, like coming with their cars, with their fancy big fat cars, like, mm -hmm. like trying to, you know, like uh, hook them up, you know, it, I, it was just, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was this experience that just makes you like understand how, how big the distance between, yeah, between home and, and home, you know, <laughs> like, 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I, t- I totally get that. Uh, I was asked, uh, like, we, we were also going to take some questions from the chat. Uh, and I see that th- there's one question. We, we can take that. Uh, is there something that Fadlabi felt like he didn't get to say in the book? Because we're talking a lot about the things that are, are kind of said in the book. And I, for, for those listening, I really... Um, yeah, I mean, like... Reading this. No, no, I mean, like, the book is not really, like, uh, it wasn't, like, a list of things that I was supposed to say. It was just, like, it was just, as you said at the very beginning, it was just, uh, it was just a conversation between two friends. So I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel we just talked and, uh, and somehow, like, uh, yeah, we expose each other, like, very well. So now it's interesting because norm- we're really good at hiding. You know, like uh, behind things and uh, stuff, but like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like, we totally exposed each other in this book, uh, me and me and my my dear friend Carl Martin. Yeah, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Carl Martin? Is there something that you wanted to write from from your perspective that that you thought that maybe there would be a mini graph part two? Like you said, there's uh, there's a lot of stuff to uh, to unpack, and I think especially uh, having uh, dialogues with Fadlabi's art is is just like it's super useful. And there's so much to to say around that, but I really think Fadlabi is right also uh, because we have very different backgrounds. Um, I'm Danish with a with an African mother, with a Ugandan mother, growing up in in a small town in Denmark. But you know, I'm very culturally Scandinavian, and I think I, because I'm so culturally Scandinavian, it's been very easy for me to always navigate uh, the system and not having the same exposure to racism as, for example, Fadlabi. But I think also, like when we had these conversations, there were so many things that became apparent about, like how I use that system to my advantage and how that is also. Um, also a, a result of of you know racist ideas you know uh, or marginalization somehow and so it really became an interesting conversation for me and also there are so many things about blackness uh, that i had a chance to really get into in my conversations with Fadlabi because you know Fadlabi he just talks you know he's just like uh, does not uh, <laughs> you say you're good at hiding but I felt like you were very kind of just a parent and you just kind of talk and talk uh, from the top of your head and it was really a chance for me to um, to think a lot about a lot of these hidden structures that we that we're not trained in understanding you know nobody tells us oh you need to be aware of this you need to look at this you need to think of this you know we don't we don't we're not taught that in school you know <laughs> that uh, yeah, not really. <laughs> you know exactly what i mean right on i mean there's yeah, lots yeah, of things of that's yeah. just, okay that's why i always kind of am more quiet in that context that's why i don't go to the bar dressed like this that's why i mean it's not necessarily something you think about it's just like okay this is what it means being polite or this is what it means but you know it's something else and the, a lot of those things are really learned about through the conversations with Fadlabi when he's also kind of uh, putting me to uh, to the wall. But this conversation was supposed to be about Fadlabi and about his artwork. So there was a lot of the things that kind of was channeled into that. But there was a whole world outside of that as well that I think is super important to talk about. And also something I was thinking about with this um, with this panel that we have here, like three uh, three black dudes and and uh, brown whatever yeah something like that um but also like this male i mean there's been a lot of focus happily on on uh, on women's uh, rights and queer people's rights and 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 queer people's justice um in the last couple of years which has been super important um and i think for a person being dark and also being uh, being a man uh, this like the 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 roads that we need to navigate uh, have not necessarily been uh, been talked about uh, enough i think 
uh, and that's not to kind of put on the big victim hat and say it's it's so sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically about educating ourselves, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think that educating is is the right word, and sometimes people use that arrogantly, like educate yourself. But but, <laughs> and and I hate it when you say it like that. But nowadays, I, I'm I'm walking, I'm going around at different schools. I'm on a school tour with Cultural School Second, and what I focus on is, is is for example the immigrants' history in Norway since the 70s till now. And I talk about narrations and what we're taught about other people. And after we've told like 50 years of negative stories about immigrants, we after after that we ask ourselves why are there prejudices? Why are there? Why is it like? We have to like unlearn and learn some things, and I think that is a really good question uh, point to like wrap this up on because I just realized we're kind of over the time, <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I really want to like first of all thank you guys for this uh, insightful and great conversation, and and I hope that I get to hear more of these not just in this book and for everyone listening. This is a great book to get a really deeper insight to to exactly what we're talking about and Fadlabi's exact thoughts on these different themes that we're uh, swung through. And uh, I think that is uh, the cue to wrap it up. Yes, thank you so much, Sean. And thank you so much, uh, Fadlabi and Karl Martin, and to everyone who joined this talk today. Um, the book, as you say, is now available um, in our bookshop, which is open today until 5 p.m. at Künstlerschuss, as well as next Friday uh, between 11 and 5 p.m. Uh, you can also send an email to post at kunstnersus.no if you'd like to order the book and have it sent directly to your home. So thank you very much, everyone, once again, and um, have a great weekend, everyone. I want to say thank you also to, uh, to Kunstnersus. Thanks for, for the great collaboration. And uh, it's really become a, a beautiful book. And uh, it's been great That's working better. with you guys. And, and thank you for uh, commissioning Vadlavi to do this uh, beautiful piece that's yeah. also being that's been uh, bought by the National Museum. We didn't say yeah. that either. Oh, so, I didn't know that as well. It's part of the it's part of our national history, you know. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, that's all Gilda, man. That's all Gilda, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's so awesome. Nice. And also, right. just for the record, uh, I co-curated the exhibition "Lift Every Voice" with Michel Tistel from uh, "Lift Every Voice." Just so everybody knows. Oh, oh. Nice, bro. Nice, bro. Yeah. Yes, thanks. All right, thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye.